So Roblox has released a pretty great update for Roblox Studio, and if you are a developer or a scripter, I think you are going to like it. But this update is exactly about a user-defined function documentation, which is going to allow you write documentation in the code editor. And I'm going to present how it works. So as usual, leave a like and support the channel, and let's get into the video. So right here we have the new script editor hover tips and user-defined function documentation, which is the mentioned update, where the Roblox staff is saying that, hey creators, we are adding a new feature to Studio Script Editor, designed to provide you with enhanced access to essential script information and here is a quick rundown of what's new. So you have the features right here. And one of them is the new hover tips, where they have redesigned the hover tooltip so that it's consistent with the styling of the new script editor. And hovering over the text in the script editor or using the default hotkey command rather combination with Ctrl, Shift and I at your cursor's position will display the tooltip. And the script analysis diagnostics now include the same link as the script analysis window, allowing you to quickly access the relevant documentation. And the type detail information is now displayed more consistently with an autocomplete and signature help using aliases when available. So I have this little give preview right here, where you for example have an unknown type string because this string was capitalized. But this is just a preview of the hovering tooltip. And now you have a documentation on hover, but basically, the hover tip displays summaries from Roblox documentation if available. You can use these links in the hover tip to quickly jump into the relevant documentation page in your browser for more detailed information. As shown right here, you have the open documentation right there. And I think this was already on here, but I think only on the code block examples. But now moving on, if you want to view more of the documentation content, you can resize the widget via the top right edge to your preference. And the size adjustments is stored for future initial display of the hover tip. So this is going to basically just save. And mostly something like this is just a user experience or a quality of life, but it's still pretty good that they added this. And now you have the user-defined function documentation, which is like the biggest thing from this update, where, like I said, if you are a developer, you should be really happy about this one. But now, for user-defined functions, the script editor automatically extracts comments placed above the function definition and displays them in signature help, autocomplete, and the new hover tip. No formatting or special syntax is required. And as shown in this preview right here, you have the comment about the function saying ensures that the pass argument is actually a string. And it's going to display in this box right there. And something like this was needed for a really, really long time. Because imagine you have different frameworks, for example, like profile service like Smartbone, where the documentation will be written in a one comment block, for example, about the script. And every time you try to use a method or a function, you would have to know basically from the documentation what it does. But now moving to the last paragraph, alongside these new features on autocomplete and overall type check latency. Let us know of any issues you encounter or any feature requests. We look forward to sharing the new update soon and happy scripting. So that's everything for the dev forum post, right? But I also saw some requests from people, also shout out to Mr. Only Kemal, who told me that he left a first comment under this post. But anyways, I saw different requests from people, one of them being the user-defined documentation inside of type annotations. And you can already do that with an example provided right here, right? But this is kind of a workaround. And instead of having to do a whole type export and defining everything here, it would be much better to just have it in the type definition itself. And another suggestion would be to have code examples in the mini documentation, like Roblox's normal two tips have. And this would kind of be a bit more work, for example, while documenting everything, but for more important or complicated stuff, it would be really nice to have something like this. And lastly, there was also a suggestion to, for example, add hyperlinks to the function documentation. And here, Roblox would have to make some kind of a whitelist to only, for example, allow Roblox links, or maybe even like GitHub or the forum. But this is overall going to be a bit of work for Roblox too. And there was also some fun stuff that I saw, mostly again from Crusher Fire, where you can put different font formatting and emojis into the user-defined documentation. But I noticed that there was also a suggestion for the rich text markup, and a Roblox developer answered that at present you should be able to use the HTML tags in the documentation tip, which we are going to also check out in Studio, that I'm going to move to in a second. But really quickly I just wanted to announce that I am live streaming on the weekends, and recently we've been rating your Roblox games. And thanks to everyone who comes to these streams, since you guys are making them really fun. But I'm going to move into Roblox Studio right now. Okay, so right now when we are in Studio, I can just add, for example, a server script, 
and for example make a local function and call it foo. And right now if I try to call the foo function there isn't really going to be anything but if I for example just add a comment and say something right now if I hover over the function it's going to have the something documented and same if I for example try to call it. And if I for example try to add an emoji, let's just add pumpkins because it was Halloween recently, it's also going to have the emojis right here. But let me try to do a longer comment block. And also the documentation to work properly, it needs to be right above the function because as you can see, it's not going to show up. So there needs to be no space between the function and the comment. So let's see if I for example add a tag, which is going to say m, and say that this text is italic. And maybe I should actually zoom everything in and it actually made the text italic. So is it going to continue or do I need to close the tag? And I actually need to close the emhtml tag. So now this tag is going to be italic but the aaa isn't. And hold on, you actually have a code tag. So is this actually going to add code? Hold on. Okay, this only seemed to add a code block, but this is not really formatted like the, for example, I'm going to do another variable, like the code from right here. Okay, but let's actually see the rest of the tags that we can use in this documentation. So we have the bold text, the superscript, the break and a paragraph. And all of them basically look like this. Second, so this is the italic, the code which is maybe supposed to work, but I don't really know. Then a bold text, a superscript, then a line break and... Why did it put it into that function anyways? And then the line break, which I don't think needs to be closed, and then a paragraph. And lastly, this also works with different pasted characters. And I had a really stupid idea, but just don't mind me. Basically, I wanted and okay, I wanted to see if ASCII code is going to work. And yeah, we have a ASCII art of the bacon hair right here. And it's really nice that the formatting is not going to break, but it seems to be moving the emojis on a new line. But yeah, we basically just have this. So if you wanted to, you could, for example, just put like a text box with like different graphics and stuff. Maybe saying the name of the framework or, for example, this was made by someone. But this wouldn't be the text, this would be, like I said, ASCII code. So you could just have a fancy display somewhere. And I just had another stupid idea where if, for example, just wanted to have some fun, you could make a troll documentation and yeah, just basically display random. Why, why does it copy it like this? Anyways, just basically display random like ASCII art whenever someone is typing a function. This is a troll face jump scare, but anyways. Okay, jokes aside now, I have showed the user defined function documentation and the documentation on hover, for example, right here. But the last thing I need to show are the hover tips, where I can, for example, make the foo function take a v argument, which can either be a string or a number, and then basically do the same thing that was shown in the documentation, which is to check if type of v is equal to a string, then it's going to display that a string is an unknown type. And it's going to display the same message if I, for example, try to assign string with a capital S to the v argument. Again, it's going to say type error and no type string. But then I can do else if, if type of v is a number, then I want to do whatever. And now it's going to say that argument had mismatch. That's because we didn't provide an argument. But right now we have improved tool tips on hover for basically these types. So that's basically everything from this update. Like I said, this is a really great update for developers. And again, a code documentation like this was needed for a really long time. But yeah, that's going to be everything for today. So again, go check out my Patreon page and make sure to jump on a live stream sometime. But thank you for watching. I hope everyone has a nice day and see you guys.